So we're concluding uh, today and tomorrow is the last day for uh, the letter to the Hebrews. I really enjoyed uh, preaching on it. Uh, and um, so, so let's, let's wrap it up here. Father Kuna will have mass for you tomorrow morning. So remember, the, the point of Hebrews is to tell us that there's one true high priest who offered one true sacrifice that truly took away the sins of the world, that is Jesus Christ, and how his priesthood is superior to that of what was practiced in the Old Testament and what would have been practiced to the people at the time. Also, which, again, I haven't had really had a chance to really reflect on, um, you know, because we've, we've had feast days and stuff and, 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 and those sort of things. But we, too, share in what's called the universal common priesthood of Jesus Christ, meaning that in one way we are all priests. Why? Because we are configured by our baptisms. We are configured to the person of Jesus Christ. We share in his mission of priest, prophet, and king. And so that was also what the letter to the Hebrews wanted to convey, especially when he tells us that we truly, because of Christ, we truly also enter into the sanctuary, that heavenly true sanctuary, which again, only priests could enter. So in order for us to enter into that sanctuary, we had to be priests too. And it's again, it's because we share in Jesus's priesthood. And so what do we offer? Well, kind of in a way, we offer the same thing that Jesus offers. We offer our own lives, our own bodies, you know, because that's what Christ offered. He offered his own body. Now we united to him as part of the body of Christ. We too become a part of that offering. And so as priests, we're not offering lambs or goats or anything like that. We're offering our whole lives to God where we our worship of God is, is the given of our very selves over to him. And then in return, God receives it, but also gives our lives back, but something much greater than whatever it is that we're hanging on to in life. And so that brings us now to today's first reading, the last chapter of this text. Now, the letter to Hebrews, like many other letter, letters in scripture, now go into the practical application of this. You know, the first 12 chapters was the theology. Now this last chapter is, okay, well, what do we do in our lives? And so he says this, first and foremost, let brotherly love continue. So again, that word love is Philadelphia, okay? In the Greek text, the city of brotherly love, okay? So brotherly love. So everything is grounded since we're given over our lives to God in worship, how does that look? It looks in that commandment of love. And so the first thing he says is, do not neglect hospitality. Now, in the cultural context that this was written, hospitality was a big thing. It was common to have strangers who are traveling to stop at your place to rest. We don't have that today. You know, we, we, we have motels, hotels, cars, you know, all those sort of things. I wouldn't recommend just taking in a random stranger into your house today. Okay, more than likely, you'll probably just steal your stuff. You know, you know what I mean? Okay, uh, or there's other reasons. But back then, there were no hotels. Everybody just traveled. And so, again, going back to Genesis, okay, when does Abraham receive word that he's finally going to receive a son? When he was hospitable to those three strange men who, again, the letter to the Hebrews tell us that they were probably angels, whatever, whoever they were. Abraham became a servant to these people in hospitality, okay? So maybe we're not taking people literally into our homes, but generally just having that type of service mentality to our fellow, fellow person. Um, again, prisoners, um, definitely a good part of the ministry, um, going to you know, prisons and evangelizing. Prisoners in this sense were probably also Christians who were unjustly arrested and persecuted and then he goes into these two other attachments, okay? That of love and that of money, okay? So he talks about marriages, being kept undefiled, being faithful to each other, and to detach ourselves from the love of money, okay? All these things rounded and rooted and rooted in what? The love of neighbor and the love of God. That is how we truly offer our lives, 
We come here, we give God our lives, but then we show it when we move out of the church and we love God above all things and we love our neighbor as ourselves. May God bless you.